the very first time, the TM Master Cup Series visits the Nürburgring. And for the very first time, Greg Woodard wins the Delano Pole Award in car number 41. Arto Kekkonen is on the outside of the front row in car number 9. This is Gessler's home race, and Kekkonen has extra pressure to perform. Cariola winner Rossini and two-time series champion Devereaux in row 2. And Savarol and Clavino in row 3. Bates and Roderick in row four. Paul Lyons will be back in car number six, replacing Jacob Card for the rest of the European tour. Dwyer in Davenport, solid qualifying efforts. The Souza keeping up his strong form. There is Darren Cardell in the third. Gessler, car number 152. Kuznetsov, another strong run. Keegan Mallory starts 18th. Ian Cooper and Axel Andershun in row 10. Mika Rantanen is back in row 11. Joao Paulo Vidal, his first start of the year. In car 78, Cameron Taylor, strong weekend so far. Nico Eichel is one of two German supercar regulars in the field in the third black diamond car. And uh, you also see uh, De Delgado de Garmo and Manicor cars uh, right behind them. Rows 16 and 17, Rodriguez, his first start of the year. And the other two Bernstroms, Peter Short and the Mad Uncle is back. Kazuyama and Dan McKay and the two Maximus cars were... Uh, Struggling in qualifying, the Sova given a penalty in qualifying for a collision with LaRoe in practice, and uh, Raketa and uh, Benoit Vukler were sent to the back of the grid for their collisions with other cars during the round of Russia. Greg Woodard gets a good start off the line in car 41. Kakinen gets a good start as well. Uh, Roderick looks like he fluffed it in car number four. And uh, now here we go towards turn one. Looks like Kakinen might have a better run into turn one, but Woodard has the line. Rossini tries to make a three wide as Woodard leaves his braking too late. Kakinen even later. We're three and four wide. We got cars spinning in the back of the field. But meanwhile, we got Kakinen trying to have a run here on Greg Woodard in the nine car. He looks like he might have it. Rossini falls back just a bit. Rossini jumps the curb into the side of the 41. That curb is rather large. And Kakinen, oh, we got smoke, I think, coming out of the back of the nine. We got problems with Arto Kakinen. His lead lasts a corner, and he's in serious trouble already. So, disaster for Arto Kakinen, who's looks less... Yeah, Luke, we think that Arto dropped a whole bunch of oil in turn one. Just be careful. Oh, that's, that's got to be heartbreaking, because that means Kakinen had problems off the line. Is more causing some problems. And look at Brandon LaRoe with probably overtake of the year right there in the 39. But... Tom Moore, the 19, squeezed into both the Manicor cars, got Olenek and Atkins in trouble. So here we are on board the 17. Uh, there's two guys that I would really not want to be messing with. Um, Lewis Kingston and Packer Carroll's names will probably be on that list because the Manicor guys are sort of enforcers on track. Nobody expects them to get on. Yeah, Tom Moore has moved over right into the 17 car. There's no excuse for doing that. Lap one, turn one. Uh, because you know you're going to have a, you know you're going to have cars over there, and uh, Kingston getting ahead of Dan McKay. There's all sorts of damage in the back of the 23 car. Dan McKay getting a few positions there, along with uh, Joel Rodriguez, who's in an experimental Lennard chassis. That's kind of an interesting piece that he's running there at car 86. Here. Oh, so you had that Davenport confirming what I suspected that that uh, Arto Kakinen had problems right off the line in car number nine. So um, now looking at uh, Adrian Devereaux and Melanie Klavano as they enter turn one. Uh, oh, we got Rossini trying to challenge Woodard. Oh, I keep put the bumper to him. Rossini is going to go right on by Greg Woodard, and we got a new leader. The Italian, who won the Cariola Grand Prix, moves into the lead here at the Nürburgring. And Rossini beginning to uh, try to stretch a lead on Greg Woodard. As Woodard trying to get that spot back, he sticks his nose in. I don't think he's gonna quite get it here. No, looks like Woodard is gonna have is uh, gonna have to uh, uh, follow in Rossini's tracks for a bit because the Italian is on top form. As here is uh, Luciano Savarol in car number five, trying to make up some ground after a disappointing by his standards qualifying run. Uh, Savarol's been on the pole quite a few times. The Lennard at his disposal is one of the quickest cars in the field. This is a lot of the people on this uh, Lennard International team are the same are the same people that took Michael Sykes to the title last year. So um, uh, we, oh, we got uh, Yevgeny Kuznetsov in car number 15 running up in 12th place. Uh, this is one of Kuznetsov's best runs of the season. So um, we expect some good things from the Russian as we got uh, Chris Davenport behind him also having a good run. But let's look at Darren Cardell here in the 152 car as... Um, Cardell is trying to make some... Oh, Chris Johans 
dead sideways there in car number 12 as uh, Darren Cardell trying to chase down uh, the uh, former short track ace. Oh, John still is very much a short track ace, but he's sliding all over the place like he's on dirt. Darren Cardell going right on by. Cardell um, grew up road racing, won at Ohio last year. He's currently running full time in the German Supercar Series. Hadn't exactly been lighting the world on fire over there, but he's uh, still been reasonably competitive. Here's both the alert guys, Johans and Scott Stoidler in the 13 car. Stoidler, that yellow car, the uh, yellow rims on it as uh, uh, Ashby goes ahead of Cardell. Probably a new livery might be headed for the American Launch Energy Racing Team. That's a paint job we've been gotten very familiar with over the uh, past couple of years as that's Nico Eichel. The, uh, who's uh, the German supercar points leader in the 65 car. Uh, all over Chris Johans. Eichel, very familiar with this track. Uh, the younger brother of Hans Eichel, who uh, ran the Cariola Grand Prix a couple of times in years past, as Chris Johans. Uh, struggling a little bit right now in this opening stint. Johans got a lot of talent, both he and Scott Stoidler. Um, a little surprised that the Inglesby's have let them down. Uh, because um, I think the series could really do with both those guys in a competitive ride as they're looking at Miko Rantanen and Axel Andersson doing battle with Ian Cooper as Rantanen makes a strong move on Andersson to try to take 20th and he's going to do that as now they head towards turn one. Rant oh no, 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 Rantanen moves over on Andersson and he pays the price and he's off the course and into the wall over there. Miko Rantanen I think he might have thought he was clear, but I, uh, I, don't, I don't quite know how he made that error. That seems to be a little bit of a basic mistake, probably over exuberance, but uh, the fan who did so well at Cariala having problems already, and they are self-inflicted ones. As Kevin Dwyer looking at in ninth, he's making a move for the pit area. Dwyer, bro, oh, whoa, 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 Dwyer! So both the, uh, the two lead Gesslers in trouble, and Dwyer looks like he had no traction coming into the pits. And he just slid it forward. Greg Woodard now throwing the block on Adrian Devereaux. Might have been a bit late there uh, for Woodard to defend that. Now, there's not too many guys that are going to take kindly to uh, having a block thrown on him that late into a break zone. Adrian Devereaux being one of them. Uh, <clears throat> Devereaux now going, trying to go by Greg Woodard. Oh, Devereaux squeezing Woodard out just a little bit. I think message sent there. Devereaux not uh, terribly happy with uh, that move Woodard pulled. Flamino now moving in as Woodard sliding all over the place in the 41 car. As Melanie now going through, and she will assume the third position as now Roderick will be next in line to challenge Greg Woodard, uh, who I don't quite think expected to take the pull, but he did anyway, and he's doing the best he can, really, in his opening stint as Melanie now really running down Adrian Devereaux. Yeah, gonna try to get uh, the run on her more experienced on her more experienced teammate uh, down into the first corner. But now looking at uh, race leader Alessandro Rossini coming into turn one. Oh no, he slid it wide. Adrian Devereaux also slid it wide, and they're both off the course. That just confirms the, that radio conversation that there that there's oil in turn one. But um, Adrian Devereaux looked like he might have. Yeah, Adrian Devereaux might, uh, might have gotten touched a little bit by his teammate. We're not, uh, don't have anything to confirm that yet, but uh, Rossini slid off all on his own. Devereaux looks like he might have also, but Melanie was awfully close to him, so I wonder if Adrian might have been giving his teammate room on the inside. Uh, but either way, Rossini just threw the, uh, threw the lead away, but at least he didn't uh, throw the race away because he can still get some points here. He is the championship leader at the moment as his teammate Leonid Roderick goes around Greg Woodard who looked like he just laid down and let Roderick go. I'm not sure why Woodard did that. Uh, that seems a bit odd. Um, unless Woodard just really struggling on these uh, set of, on the set of tires that he's on right now. But Roderick in the four, the Aperture Science Volpe, the orange car, uh, his traditional orange number four, is uh, starting to uh, really make some headway. And now he sits in second behind Melanie Klavano. Here's Paul Lyons, who, as you see on the left, is in P6. With Rossini right behind him in seventh, Lyons is uh, really impressing lately. And uh, some people might be surprised that uh, that Lenard International didn't uh, decide to put... Uh, oh, Nasova's up to 21st place if they're starting uh, on uh, the next-to-last row. That's a great run for Yuli Nasova. Anyways, 
Um, Paul Lyons, some people thought that uh, Lennard International would uh, place their reserve driver, Jose Luis Martinez, in car number six. But Martinez was racing in Mexico uh, when the round of Russia wa uh, was being held, and Lyons was kind of called in at the, at the last minute. Lyons did so well there that, um, that Lennard International decided to stick with him. Lyons has not been full-time in the series for about five years, so... Um, he has a couple of wins, but he's never been much of a road racer. Gaspar Souza, on the other hand, is very much a road racer. Car number 60. Yeah, he's a bit wide here. He's letting go. Whoa, whoa! Bunny hopping the car. Look at that. Those curbs are huge here. Now, this is a problem, I think, with a lot of European tracks. They have these giant curbs on this, on, uh, beside the track. These, uh, uh, just like launch ramps, practically, as you saw right there with Gaspar Souza. But uh, then again, uh, in Europe, a lot of the racing, a lot of the drivers, um, uh, they can be a lot less courteous and uh, uh, don't understand what track limits are. But then again, you all see you got tons of runoff here instead of just having a nice wall there, which would uh, probably clean up the racing a little bit more, I think. Uh, here's Luciano Savaral, who is running up in fifth place. Savaral closing in on Kurt Pliskin. Now, both those cars have the same engine in them. The Lennard engines in both cars. Here's Melanie Klavano, who's still leading the race. The, the Swiss driver. Uh, continuing to have a very strong season. She has two wins already. The only um, repeat winner so far this year. Roderick uh, sitting in second. And oh, oh no, Melanie's throwing it off in turn one. Melanie Klavano has just thrown the lead away. And now Roderick is going to assume P1. And uh, Melanie much slower to rejoin as she rejoins behind Scott Bates in the 88 car. So, Clavino now has her turn to throw the lead away. Uh, this race is interesting already as Lewis Kingston pits the 17 and doesn't apparently know that there is oil in pit entry and hits the, hits the wall over there. No traction entering the pits and that's going to probably rack up the repair bills a little bit for Manicor Engineering. Granted, Manicor's repair bills aren't quite as high as people expected, I don't think, as Luciano Savaral closing in on Tom Moore, who's a lap down. And uh, Tom Moore, uh, this 19 car, is not exactly covering himself with too much glory today. Savaral goes right on by. Not too much of a fight there for Moore. Granted, um, that is a, uh, that's a Lycoya Brute uh, that Moore is driving. Lennard owns Lycoya, who, uh, and, uh, so, uh, I don't know. Uh, there's another Lycoya in front of him, that being Pliskin, and there's another Lennard in the field, the experimental car, driven by Joel Rodriguez, but, um, uh, that Lennard that Rodriguez has is, uh, apparently is more in common with the Omeka cars, as now Tom Moore is being a rolling roadblock to Alessandro Rossini, who runs, uh, behind Savarol in the running order. Huh, wonder how that worked out. Uh, maybe someone could explain to me the uh, trail of money there. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, as, uh, as Moore finally moves out of the way, but he's cost Rossini so much time, and now he's holding up Paul Lyons, who is in one of the works, Lenards. And, gee, Lyons had an awfully easy time getting by Moore there. <laughs> I don't think, uh, don't think he had too many problems getting by the 19 car. Tom Moore really being a bit of a nuisance at the moment, uh, uh, <laughs> selectively too, and that's interesting to see how that works out as Rossini pits the three car. I think he's had enough of being behind lap traffic at the moment as uh, we've got uh, a local yellow out and it looks like it might be because we got uh, parts of a tire on the track and it looks like that tire, that might be off the 13, that is off the 13 car. So Stoidler is going to Roll that thing slowly back to the pits. He's gonna get in, it looks like, uh, and he might stay on the lead lap, we're not sure. Carlos Riquetta is running up at 19th place. The Colombian continuing to impress in the Katziv. So, uh, Carlos Riquetta in this uh, 14 car is uh, having a pretty strong run at the moment. Came from the back of the field at Russia before he threw it away with a rather silly collision with Lewis Kingston and uh, here he, he is coming from the bow, and he's bringing it into the pits. Raketa pits the 14, but here we have a pit party. As, um, it looks like the entire field, really, is has come into the pits. Tom Moore stayed on the track, and into turn one he goes, and right off the road. 
really no reason for him to be pushing it that hard, but he is. Um, as now we're going to see who wins the Battle of the Pit Crews. And it looks like it's going to be Kurt Pliskin. Power Steering Incorporated's pit crew has put Kurt Pliskin into the lead of the race in car number 16. Kurt Pliskin now assumes the lead as we look at Scott Stoidler, who's running back in 40th, but at least Stoidler is still running. So, Stoidler is the last car on the lead lap. He is hoping now for monsoonal rain that it's become so much so that it's impossible to continue the race and it gets red flagged, so that'll put him back at the tail end of the lead lap. I don't think that's going to happen. Stoidler does have one career victory. That came back in 2009 in Australia when he was driving for Hodges Walter Racing. Here's Kevin Dwyer in car number, in car number 8. He's going to be all the way up in 6th place, it looks like, when everything cycles out. And uh, right behind Melanie Clavino, trying to challenge Clavino. And in front of Clavino is Paul Lyons, you might notice. Still has the rookie stripes in the 6th car, and that car still has Jacob Card's name on the roof. Anyways, Kevin Dwyer might actually be declared the winner of the round of Sweden because uh, uh, Yamino Tenshi, who, uh, who took the checker to that race, uh, that car was actually taken back to the R&D Center and uh, there's something going on with the uh, Clockwork Midnight that uh, has the uh, official that has the uh, officials' uh, eyebrows raised a little bit, and there is going to be some further investigation in, into that car's legality. And if Tenshi is disqualified, Kevin Dwyer gets the win. So uh, Dwyer is uh, taking that in stride a little bit, uh, perhaps a little bit more than we expected. As Kurt, Pli no, no, Kurt, what are you doing? Oh no, he just threw it away. He threw the lead away in turn one, just like, just like so many other people before him have. But why? I, oh no, we got a problem. Cameron Taylor is out. That's a lot of smoke coming out of the back of the 26, and that's a big disappointment because Taylor actually qualified pretty well. And uh, for his race to end so early is a little bit of a disservice, to be honest. And we got Rossini in trouble. The championship leader, Rossini, is in trouble. And the three car is blown it up. He's blown up. He's out. And that's one of the Volpe's done. And it looks like he's going to park in one of the grid spots. Uh, as now we got Luciano Savarol in car number five, who's leading the race. Roderick second. Clavino third. As you see the running order on the left. Yulina Sova is flying through this field. She's up in 13th. Also, uh, Nico Eichel and Carlos Rocchetta having strong runs as well. Rocchetta coming from the back of the field as well. Keegan Mallory staying about where he qualified. Melrose also coming up to the field as well. Benoit Vukler having a uh, respectable run. And Packer Carroll is soldiering on after he got a bunch of damage early. Uh, there you see uh, Stoidler up in 40th. Of course, Rossi uh, Rossini was still scored in 21st because he actually did cross the start-finish line. Um, so, uh, he's, he, obviously, he's out. As you see, uh, Roderick back there and in car number four, who's working on challenging Luciano Savarola as Kevin Dwyer. He's pinning the eight car because he is off cycle. Gaspar D'Souza challenging Scott Bates. Bates gets a little bit loose, but Bates just... See, Bates didn't spin that car out. He kept that thing under control. And it looked like he uh, anticipated that D'Souza was going to be on the inside and, went, and uh, just let D'Souza go, really. Smart thing to do at this point in the race. Matthias Taub is having a very strong run here in the Vernstrom. Vernstrom and Melrose Racing Team have had a terrible season so far. Uh, a lot of people thought that Taub was insane by joining the Melrose Racing Team, but Taub has been, Taub has been very patient. Uh, he missed the Cariola Grand Prix and had to feel the ignominy of getting bumped out by one of the Lynx cars at the, at the very last minute uh, of the Cariola Grand Prix. Taub is... Just assured everybody that everything's going to come strong for uh, this team. So far, he's having his best run of the season. He's up in 18th in the points solidly at a track that uh, I don't think Taub expected them to be very strong at. Bernstrom has a win at Ohio last year, but uh, uh, it not, didn't exactly come through outright pace of the car, really. <clears throat> it came more through um, perseverance. But uh, anyways, we're looking now at Chris Davenport, who is uh, having a pretty good weekend, actually. Davenport has had strong pace. He hasn't really put too many feet wrong. Uh, he's been kind of the, uh, the grand master of spinning off the track, 
um, in practice and just making a, making a fool of himself most of the time. But both he and Joel Palavito, who runs in 20th, are having strong runs. As uh, here is Daniel Melrose, the mad uncle. As uh, normally we don't exactly uh, associate the words Daniel Melrose and strong performances in a TM Master Cup Series car together. But uh, he's proving us all wrong because he's in 20th. And back in 21st, you see that Azuma Kazuyama just held off Packer Carroll. As Kazuyama in the Maximus car continues his strong performances. Uh, sponsorship is a big problem over at Maximus. And uh, yeah, Packer Carroll's going to go right on by. But uh, Kazuyama has been... Um, he was formerly Nomoto's uh, reserve driver. Uh, and he really hasn't had a uh, fair crack in a full season. Uh, here's Roderick now, who's going by... Oh, Ro! Ratton and not using the mirrors! I guarantee you Roderick flipped him the, uh, flipped him uh, off right there uh, in car number four. And if Roderick's driving one-handed, then... Uh, oh, boy. Um, <clears throat> anyways, Roderick still chasing down the leader as we've got Gaspar D'Souza in trouble. Looks like, oh, that's a puncture, looks like, on the 60 car. As, uh, no, Darren Cardell's having a strong run there in the 152 car. As, uh, there goes Ashby and the rest of the field. Luciano Savarol now, uh, chasing down Scott St Oh, no. Is Luciano in trouble in the 5 car? Because uh, he's off the pace, it looks like it. Luciano might be in trouble. Here comes Roderick. Like Savarol might have a puncture as well, but thankfully Luciano Savarol is right near pit in. So he was not, it's not going to be that. All right, Luke, bring it in. We're going to change all four tires on it. You're not out of this thing yet. Don't worry about it. Um, maybe he's got a little bit longer to go around the track. But anyways, Luciano Savarol in car number five. At least he didn't uh, have a tire go down in, in the uh, first sector of the track. That would have been uh, really disastrous. As Melanie Clavino now chasing down Greg Woodard in the 41, but Clavino in this two car has been, um, uh, this is uh, well, kind of a second home race. She's from Geneva, Switzerland, uh, and she did uh, race a lot in Germany in the past. Uh, one of, uh, anyways, here's Scott Bates, and you have Jenny Kuznetsov, who's having a solid top 10 run going in that 15 car. Uh, Scott Bates, the 88, doing everything he needs to right now. He's kept, he's kept that car clean. Oh, almost not quite there. Uh, and he's uh, really just focused on not crashing the car, which um, a lot of other people around him seem to be ignoring that. And there are a lot of people spinning off in turn one today. Uh, he's holding off Adrian Devereaux in the seven car. Devereaux, the former two-time series champion, because Nietzsov has got took away seventh place from Bates. But uh, Adrian Devereaux... Is coming uh, in that is going to try to get around Scott Bates. Bates uh, fairly defending his position, and uh, Devereaux is going to have a run on Scott Bates. Here is uh, Scott Bates makes life a little difficult for Devereaux, but Devereaux had the better line, and uh, Devereaux that was a pretty good move. It looks like Devereaux takes the place fairly and cleanly. Uh, Scott Bates not easy to intimidate, and. Uh, uh, then again, Adrian Devereaux is kind of taking after Scott Bates a little bit because Devereaux did say that Scott Bates um, uh, unintentionally taught him a lot about uh, racing in this series, particularly even on some of the big ovals, which uh, when Devereaux first showed up to the series, he wasn't very comfortable on. Chris Johans and is running in 12th. He's having, uh, oh, 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 into the side of Carlos Raquetta. And um, Rocky on him sure wasn't that happy about it. As there's Nico Eichel there as... Raketa took away 12th place as Eichel now is showing up into the frame. Uh, we do believe that uh, Nasova in car number 10 went off and then came back on. So she has dropped down the order a little bit as Eichel now having a run on the car number 12 of Chris Johans. Uh, we can also say that Dan McKay went off the course in turn 1 as well uh, and rejoined without uh, actually losing a place. Uh, but here is... Uh, Eichel now challenging Johans. Chris Johans, who grew up uh, racing in the American minor leagues, and Nico Eichel, of course, running the German Supercar Series. There's a lot of guys in this field that have run in the German Supercars before as Roderick spins in turn one from the lead of the race. Roderick throw, throws it off. Um, Nico Eichel won here at this track last year, I was going to mention, but leaded Roderick. 
Spins it off in the uh, first corner, rejoins. And he's going to give the lead to Paul Lyons in car number six. Lyons in. Oh, so he's in deep. Yeah, he keeps control of it, though. Lyons in the six car. This would be something if Lyons won this race because um, he's never been much of a road racer before. About after he lost his full time ride in the series, he. Uh, back in 09, when he was driving for Team Star USA, he uh, went to the Arla series. Uh, did very, very well in low-budget teams, and uh, really that was kind of a character-building experience for Paul because uh, back then the perception was that he was kind of, uh, you know, kind of fed everything with a silver spoon, didn't really have to do any work on his own, and he was lazy, frankly, back then, but man, what a difference five years makes. He's one of the hardest-working men I think I've seen uh, behind the wheel of a race car. He's offered to work on the car, cars himself, and Roderick pits the four car. Right on schedule is Woodard. Goes a bit wide. Adrian Devereaux goes by because Yetsov goes by. Here's Scott Bates in the 88, challenging. And there's Rantanen, who's a lap down. And Rantanen finally learning courtesy. But anyways, uh, here is uh, Woodard in this 41 car. Started on the pole. He's still doing a very good job out there. He's predictably going backwards. Here's Benoit Vukler, who's coming forwards in the 2T now. He's up to 22nd, and the engine is gone. Benoit Vukler was running in 22nd in a 2T now. Ben Atkins has, uh, frankly, had the better of him all season long, even though Vukler has stolen some, um, some results. But uh, really, Atkins has won the battle, but that intra-team battle quite comprehensively so far this year, and Vukler's blown it up. Let's have a look, see anyone staying out. It's like everyone's pitting on the same lap. Now one car, oh, it's Ranton and he's a lap down, doesn't count. Let's see, you're waiting for one of the cars. Oh, we got one, Nico Eichel, the 65 car. No, 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 this is getting ridiculous. Oh, Nico was trying, looked like he was going to throw in a really fast lap, see if he could get ahead of somebody when he made his pit stop, the old undercut trick, but... That's not going to work. Kurt Pliskin in car 16. We're looking at as uh, Pliskin looks like he's got something wrong with that car. Doesn't quite sound right. He's coming into the pits now. And, uh, oh, that's not going to help things. But Pl they're, they're in Power Stinger Incorporated. It's in no hurry to come out and greet him. So I'd say Pliskin is probably going to end up parking. Yep, he pulls it behind the wall. Kurt Pliskin is out. Very big disappointment for Power Singh Incorporated because they probably had a podium car here today with that 16 car. Luciano Savaral now took the lead and he's coming into, oh, yeah, there's oil and pit entry. Nothing new there. Luciano Savaral pits, but that's scheduled for him. Scott Bates now assumes the lead of the race with Kuznetsov in second and Melanie Klavano in third. Then it's Woodard, Ashby Lyons. As are your main contenders, but um, surprisingly, we only have um, just a handful of cars out, and only Tom Moore is off the lead lap, so that's uh, really kind of a surprise. I, uh, I think a lot of us are expecting to have a much higher attrition race here, but Scott Bates, the very popular Oklahoma driver, leading the field. He's one of the most experienced guys out there, and it's showing. But let's give a, a bit of a tip of the hat to the another very popular guy in the paddock, Kuznetsov in the 15 car. There he is. A popular Russian driver. Very, very personable. Uh, he's uh, uh, he's uh, not really known to be that strong of a driver. There were a lot of people that were just saying, well, at Kuznetsov, he's only here for the money. He's not really that talented of a guy. And Yulia Nasova absolutely thrashed him when they were teammates. Uh, Naso and uh, Nasova kind of helped build Cats of Engineering up for n from nothing, really. Um, that team was more or less formed and Nasova lost her ride at Volpe. And now here we have Greg Woodard in car 41 and Woodard's off again. And that's way off. So Woodard left his braking way too late there. That wasn't even close to being, uh, uh, I don't think, uh, I think spinning the car might have been the best thing that happened there. So we're now looking at the battle for 13th. As we got Matai, uh, no, this is going to be battle for 11th, I think. Taub has got Chris Davenport in the 84 in the Sioux International car. Chris Johans and Raketo. Taub and Davenport make contact. Raketo's got a run in the last corner. 
Here he goes as Johans picks the 12. Three wide. Raquette, a great move by Rocky, who's going to take two cars in one corner. As now they're coming down into turn one. Here they come. Oh, no, 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 no. Carlos Raquette is throwing it away. Oh, Taub is in trouble as well. Oh, no. Raquette, what were you thinking? That was an insane move. Matthias Taub had a, such a good run going. And then Carlos Raquetta just moved over on him and almost took out Chris Davenport. Let's have a look at it again here. From the overhead, looking down. Taub's moving over as well on Davenport. But he had Davenport cleared, but Raquetta, you just saw just chop straight across. What on earth were you thinking? Davenport not impressed. And uh, Carlos Raquetta, he's brilliantly quick, but he's had, he does seem to be uh, quite precipitant. As uh, we see, uh, you can see the uh, kind of much more forward mounted exhaust on the uh, Bernstrom 256 that Taub is driving. Now, watch this. Davenport is going to have Code Brown right about there. As there, yeah. There's nothing that either Taub or Davenport could have done to avoid that. Taub did everything he could to avoid that by moving actually over in front of Davenport. So that's kind of a no-no to move over on someone in the break zone anyway, but that was just mindless. Uh, Raquetta probably deserves another penalty, and that's probably what's going to be headed at him. Uh, Davenport in this 84 car, he's again, this is the best weekend he's had since he won at Quincy last year, and a lot of people didn't think he deserved that. Maybe there really is something to Chris Davenport after all, because uh, uh, he's been crashing a lot less this year. Um, he's been actually pretty dependable, but he just hasn't been as fast as he has been today for quite some time. Scott Bates pits the 88 car. Tire wear has been awful in this race, and I don't think I think that's been pretty apparent. Melanie Clavino staying out, trying to undercut the 88 in this two car, going for her third win of the year. Uh, the Swiss driver. Oh, no, no, no. We got another problem, another mechanical blow up. That's a big engine failure. Melanie Clavino's lost the engine on the two car, and so her quest for her third win is over. At least it is today. Melanie Clavino out of the race. Big disappointment for her. She was having such a strong run going, and uh, that's going to be the end of her race for sure. And uh, Scott Bates in the 88 car is. Um, and it looks like he's going to reassume the lead. But there's Kuznetsov, who has never won a race in this series. This is the closest he's ever been. Luciano is third. Luciano Savarol did not take tires on his last stop. Oh, 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 Davenport not happy at all with Tom Moore. Because those two looks like they might have made contact a little bit. But anyways, here's what happened to Gaspar D'Souza. You might have seen him in that last shot. He's a lap down. He's had a miserable day, and I think he'll probably be hitting the alcohol after this one. Uh, <laughs> Gaspar D'Souza's had... Oh, that's an awkward place to rejoin. Awkward place to do that. There's Kuznetsov. Where's Savarol now? Where's the five car? He should be right behind the 15. There he is. All right, so let's see if D'Souza moves out of the way in a timely fashion. Uh, looks like he's going to have to here. He's on the wrong lane. Uh, yes, there he goes. D'Souza out of the way, but Luciano Savarol setting up Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov is, really doesn't have a response, but Savarol is going to go right by Kuznetsov and ranting it around the outside. And it looks like it's going to make it work. Luciano Savarol, great move there. He doesn't have too much time left if he's going to catch Scott Bates in the 88 car. But he's going to have to put in a couple of strong laps to do it. He doesn't have a lot of time because Nyatsov tries to fight back. Oh, he gets the back of the five car because Nyatsov trying to take Savarol out. He wasn't happy with how Savarol got by him. But Savarol is now going to make a run on Scott Bates in the 88 because Nyatsov in the 15. Is back to third. This is gonna. This is the strongest he's a strongest run he's ever put in in a TM Master Cup Series race in his life. Strong run for the young Russian. White flag. 
Luciano Savaral is coming. Scott Bates, he has about half a lap to hold off the very fierce Brazilian driver. Savaral, who won the last race, the round of Russia, he cut a tire from the lead, had to pit, and Gary Hall put him on a different strategy. No tires in the last stop. Tire wear's been atrocious, but Savaral has found a way to make that work. He's closing in on Scott Bates very, very quickly, and he doesn't have too much time left to do it. Scott Bates hanging on. 88 now, he's only got a couple of corners to go. Bates and Savaral as Savaral begins to close in. In car number five, as he's got maybe one more straightaway to go. And let's see if he can do it. Oh, he's gonna have to do it very late. This is gonna, it's gonna be awfully close. Scott Bates, couple of corners to go. They make, a, they're gonna make the second to last turn here. Last corner, does Savarol have anything for Scott Bates? He's gonna have to throw it in awfully hard. No, doesn't look like it. He gives it everything he's got, but Scott Bates, his age and experience pays off and he takes the win here for the round of Germany in a, in a fantastic drive. A brilliant drive from Scott Bates. He didn't put a foot wrong the whole race. Savarol and Kuznetsov complete the podium. The top five is completed by two more Americans, Roderick of Illinois and Minnesota's Kevin Dwyer, both of whom ran into problems early but still made their pit strategy work out for them. Yulia Nasova and Davina Henton took sixth place away from Adrian Devereaux. Fantastic run from both of them. Nasova in particular, who came from 40th on the grid to sixth, Nasova went, uh, just put in some of the strongest uh, runs I've seen in that last stint. Got around her teammate and Adrian Devereaux at uh, the uh, towards the end of the race. Paul Lyons in ninth, and Undershin rounds out the top ten. Round of applause to Darren Cardell and Nico Eichel. Their familiarity with this course was apparent. Chris Johans, another good run from him. Ian Cooper, Chris Davenport's pit crew kind of fluffed it in the last pit stop, but he, but he still brought it home in a solid 15th. Melrose, a uh, round of applause for him as well. Joe Olenek, Peter Short. Uh, Keegan Mallory dropped way back and then fought back up to 19th. And Joao Paulo Vidal uh, just beat Packer Carroll for the final points position. And now let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship with uh, nine races in the books. Obviously, Rossini's still the points leader with Melanie Klavano second, but Scott Bates the major gain there as he moves up to third in the championship. Roderick moves up a position, Savarol moves up two. Adrian Devereaux, kind of the big loser this week, drops to seventh in points. Uh, Kevin Dwyer is uh, now up to ninth. Axel Andersen back in the top ten in, in the championship. Nasova beginning to close in a little bit as uh, her season is really beginning to kick into gear. Uh, Davina Henton also has uh, beginning to uh, move into place. Lynx Racing looking uh, pretty strong here. Uh, hopefully that fo uh, that good form for those two continues. Uh, and also looking a little bit further back, uh, Carlos Ricada 19th in the championship, but Kuznetsov gained six places to move into 20th. One look at the Independence Trophy still has Ryan Matthews doing very strongly, but he still has a race in hand. And uh, also we have Gravis City to worry about. Uh, but we still have plenty of races left to run in the season. The next of which will be at the Launch Energy Motor Park in Wales.